All right, I wanted to show a um, quick, not really a tutorial, just kind of sharing with you what I'm doing to learn a little bit more about anatomy. Um, I've been having problems in my shoulder, which has me thinking much more about anatomy, plus getting into using ZBrush to do more basic type sculptures. I'm getting a little better at it still. Um, I'm getting to the point where I feel that I need to know more than just the parts of the body. Like, I need to know more than that's the leg, that's the arm. Um, so, it's kind of two things are coming together. Shoulder issues and um, learning more about the muscles of the shoulder. And then that's going to transfer to other things too. Just general knowledge stuff. So, there are so many muscles in the body. I guess there's like 600 muscles. Um, I'm sharing you, sharing with you the few things I've learned and um, just learning the six muscles of the shoulder has been a bit challenging because it's, you know, subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, teres minor. You know, of course, we know the del deltoid and the bicep and the tricep. Um, but those six muscles up here, and then, you know, you, you've heard about, you've heard the word scapula, and the clavicle, which I don't have here, and the humerus, and the radius, and the ulna, but being able to point those out without really focusing on um, really learning where they are, and the different parts, and, you know, the, the, unless you really, unless personally, if I, if I don't set down to do it, I'm not going to learn it. So, um, I thought I could use reference images. I was, you know, use reference images to model a scapula and then use reference images to model the humerus. I started trying to model out the scapula and, you know, after an hour, I'm like, this is not going to happen. I'm not going to, you know, I don't have enough time to mod learn the the shape you know from pretty much just looking at images it's a really really very difficult way for me to um, get a 3d image by just looking at you know different angles of a 3d model um, you could do it but it you know I, I didn't trust how accurate I was going to be and I wanted to have a fairly accurate base um, so I can build muscles that's my ultimate goal is to model in the muscles to see, you know, where they're connected to the bones, you know, where they originate from, you know, what they attach to the points, and then I'll have a deeper understanding. It's similar to what I think people in anatomy school or anatomy classes are going through. They have these models in three dimension. They have an instructor there saying, this is the, what are the, the acrimonious or something like that, the highest part. No, that's this part here. That's, that's the problem. Bad design. Bad design. Um, it's the muscles, muscle, and then I, th I think it's the bursa sac that is really causing me issues. Because um, when I slouch, I think I'm allowing my whole shoulder to come down, and it just keeps pushing down on everything below there. Um, theoretically speaking, right? All right, so... Um, Accepting my limitations with ZBrush and accepting my limitations of knowledge about, you know, the shapes, the actual shapes of the bone. I did a quick search online and um, for 3D bones. And I wanted to find something. I, I didn't really need it to be a 3D scan. Um, I needed it to be, you know, the general shape. I, I wasn't really trying to get all perfect. and um, But I found... Sketchfab on Sketchfab, there are these. These are all 3D scans of bones from two different people: the, the, the um, scapula, the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. Those are all from a guy named Eric Bauer. I'll put a link in the description. Um, kind of give him a shout out and say thank you. And then the hand model is from a. Edna M. Lawrence Nature Lab, Rhode Island School of Design. And she has a lot of different, um, 
or this group. I don't know if it's one person doing it or what. Um, captured by K. Jarvanin with the Arctic Spider 3D scanner. Um, and this is from a replica of a, of a hand. I don't know if it's a cast model, but you can see where the, um, I'll turn off the other stuff. You can see where the um, supports are for the for the separate bones so they can carry it around and um, do what they need to do. So this here is all one, all one mesh. If I turn that on, we turn on the, so this here is all one mesh. The, this is a mesh, this is a mesh, this is all, these are all separate meshes. So what I ran into yesterday, I like to um, get the me mesh clean. Um, and you can see already that the, um, let's go back to the scapula. And you can see already the um, issues with the scapula. And this is, I've, I've played around with this and I've moved the, uh, um, taking the resolution down quite a bit, trying to fill these holes. And then as you, you can see on the back too, the, um, see these little um, weird stuff going on. If I do a close holes things, it does, it gets worse. So this is where I stopped. I was able to, um, and, and I wanna get a clean mesh so that I can unwrap this to texture it, just to get a clean, texture. I don't know what I'll be doing with this, but I wanted to have a clean mesh to start with from the beginning so that, you know, if I, as I do start adding muscles to it, I think it would be kind of a neat model if I have everything um, UV'd so that um, other people can use it for whatever they want to yeah, do. So the UV, so what, what that's doing is that's taking a, that's taking the surface area and unwrapping it basically. That's why they call it UV unwrapping, perhaps. Um, so I, um, so looking at the scapula here, we'll do this all by itself. Looking at the scapula, pretty cool, huh? Um, 3D, this is off of a scan and it's not as detailed. This is, I, I have it really low resolution so I can move it around more. And I was gonna, you know, like I said, I was gonna sculpt around it, which I probably will, but not now. Um, but the UVs, what that is, when you unwrap this, I'm just using um, ZBrush's unwrapper. This is what it looks like. And you know, it's not, it's pretty messy. Um, but it's a lot better than I can do in 10 minutes. You see this one little pix or this one little square out here, little polygon, I don't know what they call it. Um, but it's unwrapped. When I take it into Marmoset, it applies a texture and it looks um, similar to the rest of the things. So um, that's good enough for now. This is the one to come back and redo. Um, now, if I go out of solo mode and then go to the radius, and we'll go into solo mode, or I'm sorry, let's go to the humerus solo mode. This is what the mesh looks like now. I have it, this one looks pretty good. This is hole free. And I've already unwrapped this, and if I flatten it, this is what this looks like. Much better. Um, so that's what I'm trying to get everything kind of in one it's kind of like a bone, right? But t try to get it in one easily, you know, one clean seam back there all the way around, not a bunch of little bits and pieces laying around. Okay, and there it is again. So we're back in business. Um, okay, so I unflatten. Now we're back to 3D view. Okay, so anyhow, that's what I'm trying to do to everything. What I ran into yesterday was the hand. Um, the hand is not unwrapped. And when I tried, it would be ZBrush did not, could not handle it. Kept crashing, so it's like, okay, let's stop. Come up with another plan. I was going to... You know, I thought I could come and just model each of these bones, which I could, but it would take quite a while. Um, and um, I don't mind spending time doing stuff, but 
I think the better way for me to do it, what I'm doing now is um, cutting each piece out close to the joint and cleaning it up, UVing each individual bone. One, two, there's like 25, 27 bones in this hand. Um, it's good to know. Um, I'll learn the names of the metacarpal, the proximal, what do they call it? Proximal flange, middle flange, and distal flange. And then there's some bones in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bones? Yeah, eight bones in here. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 20. So it's 27 bones because there's only three in the thumb. Um, so, so, I'll, so what I'll do is I'll show you how, what I'm doing. It's kind of a um, neat use of the, the knife tool, the knife um, slice tool. Um, so I'll do that now. Go through the process. Well, so I have a little pad going on right now. So I'll show you what I've done so far. I'll close off the hand. Uh, where are they? Oh, solo mode. Okay, so this is what I've done so far. Turn all these off. Turn off the arm. Close that off. put these in this as I'm here and then I can turn that on and off zoom out Let's frame everything all right so here here this is everything I have going on here right have them in folders, turn off the arm, here's the hand, turn off the hand, and this is as far as I've gotten with the, um, the individual bones of the hand. The thumb, which is that, there, okay, so this is the forefinger, or the uh, index finger, and there's the thumb. So what I'll do is I'm going to go on the next piece of the um, index finger, which is called the one, two, three up is one, two, three, the middle phalange, phalange, um, I think it's phalange. Huh. All right, so what I'm doing, how I'm doing this is I copy the hand. I'll turn off these right now, copy the hand. Duplicate that, turn off the other hand. Now, if I crash this, so I have to go find the knife curve tool. And um, I watched the video from Michael Pavlovich. Um, this, is, this, by the way, is not a how to do ZBrush video. Um, I am just showing this as a um, I really just want to share with you what I'm doing to learn anatomy more and using the tools and where I'm going to find different, um, different models, the way I do it. But um, you, you want to go to, you want to learn about ZBrush, check out Michael Pavlovich's um, feed. Super fast talker. I swear I can only get about 5% of what he says if I'm lucky, and that's after watching it three times. So, um, and um, I think the other guy's name is Drust, Joseph Drust. He's on the, um, the ZBrush thing. And then there's so many others online. So, you know, look at them if you really want to learn how to do things. I'm just doing the basics, very, very basic stuff. But I am getting to a point where I'm starting to be pretty happy with what I can do. So I'm using the knife tool, this uh, knife curve tool. And... Boom, take that away, bye. Boom, take that away. Um, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'll just go through this really quickly. 
Oops. Have to learn, get used to which way, which side of the knife it's going to cut on. You know, and you can start it going. Oops, there it goes again. You can start it going and then start the tool going and let go of the trigger so that you can um, adjust the angle where it's going to cut. And um, turn this draw size down, move. Cut that, cut that. It really becomes quick. I find that when I do the, um, you know, you can do these things. You double tap Alt, then you can get the angle. Um, if I do a curve sometimes, it crashes. So I'm just kind of keeping it really, really, because you can do tap once and you get a curve, tap once you get a curve, tap twice, you get a straight line. If I'm doing that on the mesh sometimes, it um, the curve kind of crashes. So I just keep it straight and then I come back with the uh, um, different tools to uh, smooth it out. Whoops, wrong way. Yeah, but the, um, okay, so I'll go to the clay, build up tool, get it small, and then um, let's kind of mash it down a little bit. I'm using a tablet. Smooth it out, mash it down, and cut that off a bit more. Gotta get the right angle. That's a little hole there, so let's kind of fill that up. It's these holes that um, are kind of problematic. Um, I'm not trying to get this to align. Well, not align is not the word, but to be a perfect fit with the bone sitting on top of it. Maybe I'll come back and do that. But for now, I just want to have an isolated mesh and um, get it in more or less the right um, the right shape. You see that hole? Whoops. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's get, get up close to there. There we go. All right. Oh, that's probably good enough. Okay, so here is this... Um, this piece. Let's see what. Let's see what it is again. We have it created. It is that part of the finger or that part of the hand. So it is the middle flange of the index or the um, yeah the index finger. I think they call it number two. Um, yeah, middle flange. So we'll call it index. How are, what are we naming these here? Calling index middle flange. Index middle, oops, don't need the underscore. Phalange. All right, so we have that named correctly. Put it in the folder. Let's order these from big, from closest, metacarpal, proximal is the first, and then index. Keep them all organized so you know you kind of know where they are. All right, let's turn off the hand, and now we'll go into the remeshing of it. Right now, there's um, let's see what it looks like. So here's what we, we have different. So when the knife tool cuts, and I, I don't really know, have the use for it, watch that uh, Michael Pavlovich video about this, and he really he's really excited about this sort of stuff. This These are all separate um, polygroups that you can do things with. I'm not really uh, uh, 
talking about that, so I just make it all the same, and that's a control W. Now we'll remesh this, we'll go beyond geometry, this is how I'm doing it anyhow, Dynamesh. I don't need it to turn off the blur, turn on project, and it seems to be around 500, 600. Let's see what happens here, Dynamesh. There it is. Um, that's pretty cool. Let's turn off the polyframe. That's what it looks like. Control Z. That's what it looks like before. So we'll do it again. I mean, shit, look at that. Dynamesh. There we go. 6,000. Now we have that just for fun. I'll go into the modify topology and close holes. I think Dynamesh always does it, but I'm going to do it anyways. Optimize points. Um, now we'll go into UV unwrap. See plugin. There are no UVs right now. It's just the model. Um, see if I go to flatten, it'll go like you do not have no UVs exist. So I'll go to the Z plugin again and unwrap. All right. Let's see what it looks like. Make sure that's cool. Flatten. All right, that's decent. It's all one piece at least. Zoom. And I mean, just for fun, you can see where the seams are on it. Unflatten. Um, show seams. Where is that? Enable control. No. Check seams. There it is. That's how it split it. All right, well, there we go. Turn it all on. There's the hand. So what I'll do when I'm done as well, I'm going to make this, at least make the um, rotation points for each bone up here um, in a place where you can um, somewhat articulate the model. This is a bit, you know, you if you want to flatten it out and build your muscles and tendons and everything, then it will be a little easier if the um, pivot points are in a, um, comfortable location. So we'll do it with the last piece we made. Um, the index middle flange G. Okay, so this is where the rotation point is right now. That's not very helpful. Put it back to where it is. So you press control, whoops, control C, I'm sorry, alt. And then you get the uh, pivot point moved to where you want it. And playing around with this before and it's like the pivot point is not here it's more you have to project kind of create a I think you have to make a triangle somewhat like this and this is where this is where the pivot point should be it's a little deeper in the um, in the joint than I, I at first thought so I'm going to align this as well so it's Kind of a little bit more makes makes a little bit more sense with you know how this actual bone is sitting. So that looks a little bit that looks pretty. No, that looks a little off there. Move it over a bit. Anyhow, so and you want to pick one of the three axes that it's axes that it's um, see. That looks pretty good. And we, I won't go the other way. I'll just uh, move it like that. So there you go. So eventually this will... Oh, I need to move that back to where it was. Okay. So that the next bone will just line up and I don't have to do a lot of uh, guesswork and all that stuff. So let's make sure it's lined up. Okay, cool. And that's that. So anyhow, once again, the um, the people, the um, people who have these um, scans are um, Edna M. Lawrence on Sketchfab Nature Lab, Rhode Island School of Design, and that was for the hand, and then the rest of the models, um, the rest of the hand, 
the rest of the arm, I'm sorry. Um, rest of the arm is from Eric Bauer. Um, he's, gosh, I don't know, he's, he's in a school as well. Let you know what I'm doing when I get it done. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.